So let's go now to principle number three. So principle number three is going to be in, um, I'm going to take you to verse 11 because it's very uh, powerful what verse 11 brings out. All right. So verse 11 shows this principle number three is that it shows you where the potential people are. So let's go to this. Let's go to the scripture. Let me show you this. And, um, and, and principle number three of how he says here, look at verse 11. And he made his camels to kneel down without the city by the well, by a well of water at the time of the evening, even the time that the women go out to draw water. I hope you see that. So this servant was so smart. The servant says, listen, I already know. I already know who I shouldn't be looking for. That was principle number one. Principle number two, he already understand that I can't force nobody to marry um, Isaac. I can't force them. They have wills, so I can't make them. Now, number three is he had enough wisdom to know where to go to find the potential ones. And this is where I see a lot of single people <laughs> miss it. So most single people will say the only place you go find them is in the church. Hmm. If, if you look all across the world, a lot of congregations are 70 percent women heavy, 30 percent male heavy. So you can already see that those numbers are a little off. So it doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to find your mate in the church. However, I will say that that would definitely be my pick for the first place for you to want to find. But what I'm trying to say is don't limit yourself to just that. What's some other places that you can find them? Because if you notice an, an Abraham's servant, Abraham's servant went to the well because he says that's where in the, he went to the well because that's where the women draw water. So he knew where the women draw water. So though he's looking for a wife and wives are women. So guess what? He's like, listen, we're going to go to a place where they congregate, where they have to go. They have to go to this place. So church is, a, is one place. But you also want to look at other you also want to look at other places where um, if you if you are a man, you want to look at a uh, the places where uh, godly women are. If you are a woman, you want to think about a place where godly men are. Now, I can tell you this, that anytime there is uh, a connection in the body of Christ, whether it's at your local church or whether it's conferences or whether it's admission trips, whatever, these are places that you can potentially find. Uh, somebody now I would have never, never in a million years have would have guessed that my wife was going to be I was going to meet her from a missions trip. I completely thought it was going to be at my local church. And trust me, many came in, many came out and none of them was there. And so people used to say to me, you see all, all these uh, these available women who like you and you just I mean, you're not giving none of them no attention. It's because not, I did not feel that any of them had the DNA that the Holy Spirit showed me that I needed for where he's taken me. And I just kept on saying, I just don't censor here. I don't know why this is a well. They are here, but I don't, I don't, um, I don't sense it yet. So now let me share with you this. The scripture says in second Timothy chapter three, that in the last one of the things that's going to happen in the last days is that people will have a form of godliness. Now, why am I bringing this out is because you're going to have a lot of people with a form of godliness that's going to go to church. <laughs> so that's why I said church can't be your only option. So you will have a lot of people in the church building who will lift up their hands, but they're lifting up their hands just to get the good ones. And once they get the good ones, they ain't lifted up their hands no more in church because they went to church to get you, not God. Ooh. <laughs> so having a form of godliness is going to be something that's going to be very strong in the last days. So you, we, God has made a way. And I know some people have said things like, I don't believe in, 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 in online dating. And I don't believe in, in, in that that person got to be right on your street. They got to be in your city. And guess what? That was me. That's why I told God, I said, Lord, my wife has to be in Buffalo, New York, because I'm the kind of person I like to see the person every day. You know, I'm a visual person. I need to see you when I'm talking to you. And, and so when I went to this missions trip and I met my wife, I was like, this can't be happening. Now, even though I was happy that I met her and I was like, wow, 
I didn't like the fact that there was long distance. It's like, I don't want to have to pay for trips to go and see somebody. I don't want to have to, I'm like, God, this is going to, this is not going to work. But it was actually a blessing because us FaceTiming every day taught us good communication skills. We did, we had, we didn't have no time to get the flesh in the way. It was all about getting to know each other. We did that for three years and we took trips back and forth. And, to, and now it's like God has blessed our relationship because we spent so much time in the beginning talking. I mean, that's all we had to do. So it was actually a blessing, <laughs> but watch this. But what if I didn't go on that mission trip? That mission trip was my well. That mission trip was a place that God says, these are where good ones are. So um, I don't know. I know some of y'all saying, you know what? Um, uh, fascinate when your next mission trip. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the Lord got something for me over there. Well, hey, you never know. But I tell you, it has happened. It was so crazy. Is right before I met my wife, I saw a, a powerful testimony of another uh, a well-known minister here in the United States, and he was giving his testimony. He was just, and, and, uh, and it was crazy because somebody prophesied this to me some years ago. They said, "You, you." Um, uh, he came to our city to speak one time, and somebody said to me, they said, when I saw him on stage, immediately the Holy Spirit showed me you. And I'm thinking, okay, great ministry, powerful man of God. And so one day I just happened to try to get a little bit more insight about him. Come to find out he was sharing his testimony that he went on a mission trip and found his wife in Africa. And I'm like, what? And then the next year I go on a mission trip and find my wife. I said, oh my Lord. So what am I saying that you got to go out of the box of if you don't see them in your church, if they're not, a, they're not any potentials in your church, no, not any potential in your city, it is not the end of the story. God has sons all over the place. He has daughters all over the place. The only problem is we, we, oh Lord, they gotta be, they gotta be here. And I almost missed my blessing because I wanted her here. And so God says, do you know how big my well is? My well is so big. My, I have a well over in Dominican. I have wells over in Africa. I have wells in Alaska. I have wells in Canada. I have wells in Mexico. The problem is the people don't want to go to the well. The people are too lazy to seek me so I can lead them to the well. So these women, they go to the well because they know this is where my source is. All right. So your well has to be bigger than your city. Your well has to be much wider and much brighter and much broader to the point that you can't even be looking at race at this point. And I know some people are like, oh, you got to marry within your own race. Listen. You better throw that out the garbage. At this day right now, you better marry somebody who love God and love you. All right. Forget the way they look. Forget, forget all this. Uh, they got to be my color. That stuff is keeping so many people stuck and so many people are not getting true love because they are so caught up on ethnicity and race and, and all this stuff. Listen, if that person loved the Lord, if that person is going to treat you well, if that person is going to honor, respect you, if that person is trying to make it to heaven just like you, you better listen, you better open your eyes and say, Lord, thank you for the well. Thank you for this, this servant that's at the well. All right. All right. I'm trying to be good. I got to preach tonight too. So y'all trying, y'all trying to pull everything out of me today. <laughs> so listen. So that's principle number three. He knew where to go. He knew the type of atmosphere, the type of place that these potential people, these potential available people for marriage would be hanging out. And that is some of the wisdom that I get from this chapter. All right.